Good morning. I'm Pastor Paul, and uh, I'm very excited that we have a, a baptism this morning. And uh, I, I, I just want to read a verse of scripture to you, and then I'll invite our guests out. It says in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4. Don't you know that all of us were baptized into Christ, Jesus, were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live for new life. And uh, basically... In, uh, in our denomination, in our movement, we believe in baptism by full immersion because it's symbolic, uh, just as Jesus died on the cross and was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead. So it is with baptism, it's a symbol of our sin being buried with Christ and then us raised 
to new life. And so that's why we do what's called full immersion baptism, and that's why I'm in a big tank of water this morning. And so I'm going to invite uh, Stephanie Cates to come, and her son TJ is going to come in the tank with us this morning to, to observe this baptism. Come on out, Stephanie. Stephanie's going to come and just share uh, a little bit of a testimony with us this morning just before we uh, do the baptism. If someone to ask me um, when I accepted Jesus into my life, I couldn't tell you. I would simply tell you I've always been a Christian. But it turns out that I was just going through the motions. Show up at church once in a while and you're good to go. Over these last number of years, that has really changed for me. I started coming to church every week. I take notes during service, and I really started to read my Bible and building a relationship with God. It really made me wonder what else I was hesitating about. More importantly, why was I holding back? The fears I had, and yes, I can only call them fears, were preventing me from being all in. Earlier this year, I made a decision to become an official member of Bethel. The church family has been here for me every step of the way, it was time for me to be in here, to be all in here for my church. I started to serve in our worship by singing. I go to coffee time, and I plan to have a small group this fall. Today I'm here to show my faith on another level. I'm going all in for God. I've chosen full immersion because a little, da a little dab just won't do me anymore. I want to rise into a new life in Christ and cleanse me from my past. Amen. Praise God. Stephanie, upon the profession of your faith in the Lord Jesus, it's my privilege as your pastor to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Well, that's really exciting, everyone. Just give her a hand one more time. Let's just take some time to pray together here today. Father, we just thank you for this chance to, to just uh, see someone just taking a step of faith, a uh, step of faith towards you, God. And we pray that as we see this, God, it would just raise up our own faith, God. Wherever we're at right now in our lives, help us to just think, you know what, God, you got something more for us. Because you're a big God, far bigger than anything we could think about. Even as we sang that song earlier, I love the, the bridge where it's like, you have no rival, you have no equal. You are the name far above all other names, Lord. And so may we understand that and know it and sense that you're leading us into something bigger, something new, something great that you have for each of us in our lives, Lord. And so we pray you'd help each one of us to sense that and know that. And Father, we just thank you that you are the one that's going to help us to do that in our lives. And pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, before, we're going to pray again in one second here. But uh, this is, I think there's a few here that are going away uh, to post-secondary, either for the first time this year uh, or uh, going back to school this year. And so if that's you, we'd love to pray for you right now. And so if you wouldn't mind standing, if you, that's you heading to post-secondary uh, school in the next couple, next week or so, uh, we'd love to pray for you. So if you wouldn't mind standing up, we got Abby on stage here. I think this will be your last time leading worship for quite a while, so we're going to miss that, Abby. But uh, you get to go bless someone else now, okay? We'll send you out. Uh, we got no one else heading away to school this year, and that TJ is going is heading is going back into classes as well, uh, and then Jude's going back into classes, and I, I'm trying to think of any others that come to mind. Is Ty going back? I think probably too. 
Uh, he's not here today, I don't think. But uh, we've got a few. So if you wouldn't mind just raise, like, extend the hand towards uh, these different students who are going out uh, to go to school. And that uh, as we pray, just kind of bless them uh, as they're heading out. So, Father, we just pray for each one represented here uh, that's going to school either for the first time, uh, kind of away from their parents, away from home, uh, to be able to uh, just get some more education that you've been leading them to. And so, God, we pray for each one, that you would just help them as soon as they step uh, into their new situation, into their new housing, into their new classes, into their new, their new surroundings, God, that you would just help them to know and sense your leading and guiding, God. That, Father, as they step into this thing, that uh, this these classes that are hopefully on the path towards them finding a good career, a good uh, education, God, uh, that it would just be something that just pulls at them, tugs at them, that they know that they can do your work uh, even alongside uh, all the things they're doing, God. So we pray for each one that they would connect with other Christians as they head to school, that they'd be able to find people who can encourage them in their faith, find a church, find a campus group uh, that's able to encourage them and help them, God, uh, just be able to just stay strong and stay steady uh, in their connection with you, God. We also pray just that they would be a light uh, wherever they go in their schools, God, to be able to just make a difference to those around them. Maybe it's just a small little thing uh, that they can say or do that will encourage someone towards you, God. Um, today for the kids, it's, the, it's Philip and the Ethiopian is the story, God. And I think even of this, Philip was just obedient to God to go where he was asked to go for one small little thing, and it helped change uh, this Ethiopian's life. And uh, we, as far as we know, he went back to Ethiopia and, cha- and like shared the gospel there, and that's why there's a, partly a church there in Ethiopia today. And so, Lord, we just pray that it wouldn't necessarily be that they can make that much of an impact, but just that one little thing they can do to be obedient to you that would make a difference in the life of someone else this year, God, as they, as they make an impact in their schooling. So, God, would you bless them, surround them with your love and care, and, God, may they know that you're with them every step of the way. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All right. A couple announcements today. We have uh, tonight here at our church at seven to, from 7 to 8 o'clock is Pray K7A. You've probably heard it talked about before. So it's all the churches in our area just wanting to get together to pray for our area code, right? Pray K7A. And so that's at 7 o'clock tonight. We'd love to have you come out and join us uh, to pray uh, for our area, to pray for the people, to pray for salvations, to pray for just whatever God puts on our hearts to pray for uh, tonight, uh, to pray together with other churches and other believers here uh, in our community of Smith Falls and area. On September 22nd, we have our Welcome Home Day. And so that is going to be an awesome day where we're going to have bouncy castles outside, lunch is going to be available, uh, and we're going to be able to invite some fr- like, pe- invite friends, invite people, invite neighbors. This is a great time to invite someone out for that, to just come and have some fun, to come have a meal together. And we're looking forward to seeing uh, a lot of uh, just everyone back, right? Kind of getting back in the swing of things as we go through uh, the fall here. And uh, let's see, birthdays is next. So, yeah, you ready to go? Excellent. I knew they sat the boys down. Guys, you can get back to your, your guitars there too, by the way. Um, let's do birthdays. Who has a birthday or anniversary that we can celebrate today? Anyone? Oh, who do we got? Birthday? Oh, yeah, that's, when's that? Thursday, I think I remember. Yes? Upcoming Thursday? Jordan? Awesome. Madeline, when's yours? Yesterday? Or this upcoming one? Upcoming? Awesome. Happy birthday. Any other birthdays or anniversaries? Anniversary for Will and Katie? Yeah? Awesome. Should I ask you how many, Will, or what? Yeah, I should. Don't ask him. <laughs> Josh says yes, Will says no, but I don't know which is the right answer. <laughs> okay, yeah. Sure, we can sing for Abby. She'll be away at school. Sounds good. Over here, anniversary? How many years? 13 years. Awesome. Don and Marilyn. Anybody else? It, it felt like there wasn't going to be many at first, but it's, it's ramping up here. Yeah. Two day, oh, yes. <laughs> Two day anniversary over here. They got married on, uh, on Saturday, or no, Friday. Yeah. Congratulations. I heard it was a great, ser- a great uh, ceremony in that. Yeah. All right. Well, shall we sing bir- happy birthday anniversary today? Birthday and anniversary? And anniversary. Okay. Yeah. Happy birthday, birthday anniversary, anniversary to you. you. Happy birthday anniversary to you. Happy birthday anniversary special people. Happy birthday anniversary to you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord show his mercy on special people like you. That's a lot of celebrating to do today. 
All right, we are going to get back into worship, but first we'll have the kids uh, head downstairs. Now, things are a little bit different before you go today. I am the only teacher today, so you'll all be heading to room one. So even if you're in the, like the JK to grade two class, you're heading to room one today, okay? So we'll all meet in room one, and uh, we'll keep learning about uh, taking, or what's it called? One step, what is it called? One small step, okay? Or taking steps of faith that the kids can do. All right. I'm talking too fast. It's been a while since I've had to talk at this event. Anyway. Uh, We'll have everyone stand up again uh, as we take some time to worship. Solid gold, like a vow that. 
Amen means so be it. So be it, Lord. Come on, let's sing that amen again. Happy as you lead us. this incredible song. This song was, uh, was written, was, was raised up during that crazy time we had a, a few years ago during COVID. I remember singing in my living room with my boys leading worship on Facebook Live. <laughs> and Lord, it's such a powerful song. We thank you, Lord, that you are here to bless today. We thank you, Lord, that even as we have heard earlier in the service, that we have a new couple, only married two days, and Lord, their generations and their future, you're here to bless. Lord, there's people that have been here for the first time, that are here for the first time today, Lord, and you want to bless them. You want to bless their lives. You want to bless their families. God, you want to use people from our church to go out into this amazing community. Smith Falls, we love this town, Lord. And you want us to speak blessing and you want us to encourage people. We thank you for the testimony we heard today from Stephanie. Thank you, Lord, that you cared so much. You took that family, Lord, and you brought them here and you blessed them and you're using them. And now you're, you're ministering through TJ. And Lord, we're just so thankful for what you're doing, God. And Lord, we just thank you that you are here (laughs) and you love us and you want to meet with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Oh, great job, youth band. Let's give it up for the youth band one more time. Isn't that great? Oh, so amazing. Yes. Oh, wow. This gets me so fired up. (laughs) Good job. Well, it's almost the end of the summer, eh? Where did it go? Just kind of, see ya. (laughs) Congratulations, uh, Isaac and Ashley. Give us a wave. (laughs) Well, I tell you something. I'll tell you something right now. I, I've done a lot of weddings, a lot of weddings, but I had a hard time keeping it together when Ashley and Isaac shared their personal vows with each other at the wedding. It was so powerful. And Isaac, I have never in my life been to a wedding where, where the groom to be, or actually that time you were the groom, (laughs) quoted from Ruth, the book of Ruth, and said, where you go, I will go, right? Now what's that other part there, Isaac? Your people are my people, and your God is my God. Right in front of all his peers, guys he played basketball with, Coaches were there, lots of people there, and he just declared the scripture to his bride. It was so powerful. Oh! Mm. I, I just, I, I, and I'm just, he's, they're sharing this, and I'm just like, mm, trying to keep it together. It's so powerful. And I had a number of people, guys, afterwards just come up to me and say, wow, that, wow. <laughs> wow, it was just, oh, it was awesome. So here we are, yeah. How's everyone doing, all right? Who's tired today? Where's my tired people? Okay. Mm, Same family. Mm, Might have been a late night last night. (laughs) Oh, it's so good. I just, uh, it's, you know what? It's a real honor for me to do baptism, Stephanie. Like, I never will ever take that for granted. It's such a blessing to to baptize you today. And and, uh, hey, 
You want to be baptized? We'll fill the tank anytime. And you know, hey, wasn't it nice and warm in there today, guys? Pastor Drew, man, he did a good job. He made sure that that hot water heater we got was working because it was nice and toasty in there. If you have your Bibles or your phones or whatever, you can turn to Matthew 16. I believe we have it on the big screen today. Got it on the big screen there, T-Man? Okay, man. Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 to 28. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels and will then repay every man according to his deeds. Truly I say to you, there are some of those who are standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. May the Lord add the blessing to the reading of his word. You can turn that off now, bro. If anyone wished to come after me, this is Jesus speaking. If you have one of those Bibles, you know the ones that, where Jesus' words are in red. This is in red. This is in red. It says, if anyone wished to come after me, he must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Now, <laughs> this is not a light summer message this morning, so I apologize in advance, all right? <laughs> it's hard to make this one a light one, all right? But, but I believe it is encouraging, so I'm open by the end, if you just stick with me, that, uh, that you will be encouraged. The first thing is deny himself. Where are my people that just love denying yourself? <laughs> you know, you get up in the morning, it's 8 o'clock, and you're like, Man, I'm so excited about today, I get to deny myself. <laughs> Very challenging. You know, the modern worldview is, would tell you it's all about you. <laughs> How many of you have heard that message before? Hey, it's, it's all about you. Take a break. Take a break. Read a book. You know, it's all about you. But Jesus said, deny yourself. <laughs> Luke 22, verse 42, uh, Jesus, who set the example, said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, but not my will, but yours be done. Remember, he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. He knew, he knew what was coming. And he said, if you're willing... You, Remove this from me, but not my will, but yours be done. Deny yourself. Secondly, take up, your, take up his cross. He said, follow, if you want to follow me, you want to deny yourself, take up your cross. Now, I didn't say take up his cross. I mean, you know, Jesus has already taken up his cross. He's already died for us. He shed his blood uh, because he loved us uh, uh, to become our Savior. God is not asking us, how many of you are glad about this? Because some of us have been doing this. <laughs> God is not asking us to carry someone else's cross. It's our own cross to follow him. Discipleship is very personal. To follow Jesus is not a family decision or a church decision. It's a personal decision. He said, take up your cross. Now, that is not to say that if you have the privilege of a family that is following Jesus, that it will not have a positive effect on your life. It will. It will have a positive effect on life. But we must realize that we need to carry our own cross. I'm not talking about a little gold one that you hang around your neck, all right? Um, what does it mean to carry your own cross? Well, I'm glad you asked that question. 
The cross was a symbol. Here it is. You ready? This is the, this is the truth right here. The cross was a symbol of death. of dying to self. It is putting Jesus first and his ways and applying that to your life. What cross must you bear? What things do you need to put to death? And notice I said things and not people. (laughs) What things do you need to put to death to follow Jesus? So, Deny himself, you must deny yourself, him or herself. Take up your cross and follow me. The word follow, you ready for this one? This is is my Greek lesson for this morning. The word follow or akolutheo, everybody say (laughs) akolutheo. See, you didn't know you were Greek, Uh, now you're Greek, there you go. The word follow or akolutheo not only means follow in a spiritual sense, but in a literal sense. It was a a physical act of following. As disciples, we we not only follow the teachings of Jesus, but we seek his presence and follow him wherever he goes. There's a saying, this is a quote from the time of Jesus and before Jesus. There's a saying, may you be covered in the dust of the rabbi. And literally, what it meant was that you're so close to your teacher, and in this case, when Jesus said, follow me, the disciples understood what that meant. It meant they were going to be close, they were going to go with Jesus, they were going to be with Jesus for three years, and he was going to have an impact on their life by them sitting at his feet and listening to him and watching how he lived his life. James 4, verse 7 and 8 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will, he will draw near to you, sorry, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your heart, you double-minded. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Draw near to God. Verse 25. Whoever wished to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will find it. I have a question I want to ask this morning. I want you to think about this. What are possessions? Where's Robert today? (laughs) What are possessions? Well, they're things that possess you. (laughs) Is there anything in the way of your or my relationship with Jesus? I don't believe that Jesus was stating that to follow him, you need to literally give up everything. Obviously, we do see in the Bible that there were people that followed God, that followed Jesus. We think of Abraham, we think of Moses, we do think of the disciples. But what I believe Jesus was saying is, whatever possesses you, that you need to give it up, to follow Jesus. What is your possession? Or what is possessing you? What gets in the way of your relationship with Jesus? We all need to ask this question today. What is the most important thing in my life? Because how many of you discovered that whatever you treasure will come first in your time? Do we have any uh, people here that like uh, like those little uh, video games you can get on your phones? Where are my Candy Crush people? Come on. It's okay. <laughs> how many have discovered it's amazing how you can have one thing and all of a sudden it can consume your time? Maybe we have a few here that are younger. 
Maybe not. <laughs> Maybe we have a few here that are older. And all of a sudden, you discover this thing. I think it starts with a U and ends with a tube. YouTube, yeah. You found YouTube. And all of a sudden, you just, it was amazing how much time in a day you could spend <laughs> watching those crazy cat videos. Where are my cat video people? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Dietrich Bonhoeffer, in his book, the Cost of Discipleship, which is not an easy read, but a powerful read, um, said this, Cheap grace is, preaching, is the preaching of forgiveness without requiring repentance. Baptism without church discipline, communion without confession, absolution without personal confession. Cheap grace is grace without discipleship, grace without the cross, grace without Jesus Christ living and incarnate. Then he went on to say, costly grace is the treasure hidden in the field. And we, we talked about that passage. We talked about the treasure and we talked about the pearl. For the sake of it, a man will gladly go and sell all that he has. It is the pearl of great price to buy which the merchant will sell all of her goods. It is the kingly rule of Christ for those, say, for, sorry, for those for whose sake a man will pluck out the eye of which one that causes him to stumble. Wow. It is the call of Jesus Christ at which the disciples leave their nets and they follow him. Do you remember the first time when Jesus said, follow me. What does the scripture say? It says that Peter and Andrew, and then later James and John, it says they left their nets and they followed him. What, what did the net symbolize? It symbolized everything. It symbolized their living. It sim symbolized you know, what they do every single day. The scripture says they left their nets and they followed him. Now I know you read the Bible. Some of you who read the Bible know that somewhere along the way they picked them back up. However, at that point, when we think about that, like it'd be like, you know, if, if, if Jesus called Bruce, you know, and, and, and the scripture would say, and Bruce left his tools, right? Like, you know, it's amazing when we think about that, that they left their nets. I want to talk for a few moments this morning about some practical ways that we can count the cost. That we can count the cost. That we can be his disciples. The first, the first, uh, the best way to deny yourself, number one, is to put Jesus first. To put him first. To ask the question, do you remember the bracelets? What would Jesus, excellent, no, Jesus, what would Jesus do? Like, you know, you meet someone and they just drive you crazy and every time you go in to buy your coffee, they're there and you're just like, ah, ah. That's a good time to ask the question, what would Jesus do? <laughs> you know, you're driving and you have in the past been known to get a little upset when things happen when other people are driving and all of a sudden there's that person in front of you and they cut you off and you're at the wheel and you're like eh, eh. it's then that you need to ask the question what would Jesus do? <laughs> now maybe some of you have a, a weird theology about that but, <laughs> but we'll talk a little bit later about some things uh, the second thing is uh, take up your cross. What do you need to die to? Wow, this is a light, fluffy summer message here this morning. What, what, what do you need to die to? What is hard to give up? You know, this phrase came to me. I didn't read this somewhere, but I actually thought it was pretty good. So... Uh... <laughs> If you need to walk a thousand steps up a hill, 
Now, when we were in Germany, me and Mika, we went over to see Eden and Elijah, and uh, we went to this church, you know, the ones they built like way back, and for some reason, they decided, hey, let's just build this giant tower on this church, you know, and where the steeple is, right? So the whole town could see it. But what they did as well is they built these little tiny stairs that go... <laughs> and so when we went there, well, you got to go up the stairs, right? How many of you have done that before? you got to go up the stairs because how many of you know that, like, when you get to the top of the stairs, you're at the top. And the view up there is amazing, right? So... You know, all the way up the stairs, we got up the top. Oh, this is a great view. (laughs) When we want to get up a hill and it looks impossible, it starts with one step. You know, why do we think it's different between what we do physically and what we do spiritually? You know, if, if we... Take one step at a time towards Jesus. He'll help us to get up the hill, amen? You think about physically. How many of you, come on, where are my good people here? Pastor, I just, you know, I'm trying to lose a few pounds. Where are you? Come on. No, you don't have to put your hand up. <laughs> my, my hand and my two legs are up, right? It's like, you know. It's, how many of you have discovered it's not easy? I mean, I went out yesterday afternoon with Mika, and she schooled me in pickleball. Abby, she beat me. Oh, it was powerful. Here we were in the middle of the day. It was hot. How many know it was hot yesterday? And how many of you were not playing pickleball? But we were yesterday. We went out and we played pickleball because that's what we're doing now. We're doing stuff like that, right, Mika? And, uh, and uh, she's like, yeah, yeah. You probably need it a bit more than I do. But anyways, and uh, <laughs> It's not easy physically to die to things, right? It's like, oh, yeah, this is going to be fun. Let's get on the bike and let's do 30 kilometers. Where are my bike people here? We got a few bikers here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So why would we think that spirituality and growing close to Jesus would be any easier? How have you discovered it's not easy? You know, what it takes is, it takes, you know, okay, morning, Lord. I'm going to read a chapter of the Bible today. One step. Right? Lord, I haven't really tried the prayer thing, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try and pray for five minutes today. I'm going to try and pray for ten minutes today. Maybe for some of you, like, well, pastor, like I'm a pro. I, I pray like at least 20 minutes a day, and that's including three graces and, you know, whatever. Like, you know, then just, just maybe a bit more. Amen? A bit more. What do you need to die to? If it took Jesus a series of steps to get to Golgotha, do you ever think that it was hard? How many of you have seen that movie, The Passion? Whew, that's hard to watch, man. I remember the first time somebody told me, hey, you got to see this new movie. There's this new movie out. It's called The Passion. And I'm watching it, and I'm feeling like somebody just pounded me in the stomach. It's like, you know, there's Jesus. You know, it's just so graphic. It's so, like, the, the whole story of the crucifixion. Jesus, on the way to Golgotha, Jesus in the garden said, it's not my will, but yours be done. What does following Jesus involve? Well, it involves listening to his voice. You remember? He called the disciples and he said, follow me. Listen to what it says in John chapter 10. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he puts forth all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. Now, maybe somebody say, oh, pastor, uh, I think if you start hearing voices, maybe you need to make an appointment with someone to talk to, okay? I'm not necessarily talking about a, a physical, you know, an audible voice, but just that impression, you know, when you pray and you say, God, I got these two choices, 
I have no idea what to do. When you open up the Word, when you start to read the Word, when you submit it to the Lord, there comes a place where you'll have a peace to know the right thing. I believe that if Jesus is the Prince of Peace, He may be the one that's giving you peace. Right? doesn't mean it's always going to be easy, but He's always there. We need to listen to His voice. We need to be around Him and His Word. You know, I've shared this story before, but when my boys were young, I had a teacher, uh, one of the teachers, we, our boys were went to the, the Catholic school system when they were young, and, and, and it, we had some great teachers. I remember this one teacher saying, saying to us, like, how does Joshua know so much about the Bible? And I said, well, he, he's, he, we read it to him every day. So he's 10 now, so that's, you know, 3,650 days plus leap year. You know, like, he's just every day, every day, right? He's heard a Bible story. He's, he's been reading. He's been in the Word. And I, I think that, that as we, as, as hard as it is, maybe some of us it's, it's, it's easier, but for some of us it's very hard. But as we open up the Word, the Word of God that God gave to us, and we, and, and, Literally, right in the psalm, it says, Thy word, your word, have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Your word is a light, unto, a light unto my path, a lamp unto my feet. We need to be listening to him. We need to be around him and his word. We need to not be doing our own thing. And we need to be spending time with him and his friends in a relationship with others. There's this thing called the church. You know, some people think the church is a building. You know, you know, I'm going to church. You are the church. Now, we know it's a building too, and that's okay. <laughs> some people get all weird about that. But I'm just saying, like, if we're around people that believe the stuff we believe, there's a chance that they may encourage us in our walk with the Lord. Amen. If you don't, find a new church. <laughs> like, if you, don't have, if you go every Sunday and you're like, man, I'm poisoned. Yeah, maybe you need to, you know, pray about that a little bit, right? Like, you know. <laughs> um, what will it profit a person if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? What will a man or what will a woman give in exchange for his soul? Let me just, I just want to read this to you and, and let me know what you think about this. Because maybe, I don't know. So the world versus Jesus. Okay, so let's pretend that this side is the worldly. No, just kidding. The world versus Jesus. Okay, here we go. Ready? The world, Jack. Here it is, right? The world over here. The world says, take care of yourself. That's a good thing. I mean, you know. But the world's message is take care of yourself, but can easily be misinterpreted be consumed with yourself, right? Jesus, deny yourself. <laughs> okay, the world. Find a way to make life comfy. You know, get your RSPs, get a good education, you know, get a good job, put some money away, make sure you at least 10% of savings, right? Just, you know, right? Find a way to make life comfy. Jesus, take up your cross. The world, take care of your stuff. You know, make sure if you're going to buy a car, you got a good car. Make sure it's, you know, it's a Honda because they last forever or no, whatever. <laughs> like, <laughs> take care of your stuff. Jesus, follow me and leave your nets. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow him. You know, if you have a pen with you, I can always send this to you. I want to encourage you. Remember when we, when we started, I talked about the hill and the stairs or the tower and the stairs? Maybe for some of us who are maybe, we just, we, Pastor, can you just give me something I can just take home? This one thing that I can take home that will help me this week. Maybe what you need to do is you need to look at Matthew chapter 3. 
sorry, Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 to 10. If you have a pen with you, Matthew 5, 3 to 10, you can get it on the tape later, right? I'm not going to read it all. But these eight verses, 3 to 10, are the are the Beatitudes. You remember when I preached on the Beatitudes? It wasn't that long ago. It was about a year and a bit ago when we started in Matthew, right? We almost spent a week on each of the Beatitudes. Maybe what you need to do is look, read through those, those Beatitudes and say, okay, Lord, I'm not doing well on all eight of these. <laughs> Maybe some of you are doing well on two of them or three or five. But pick one. First step right? Deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. Pick one, one beatitude, and ask the Lord to show you how you can live it out in your life. Maybe it's this one. (laughs) Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Wow. Maybe it's Maybe it's this one. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. You know, take one of those beatitudes. I'm not asking you to take all eight or nine. One. Or maybe it's uh, Matthew chapter 5, a little later, near the end of the chapter, where it says this. You have heard it say... You have, sorry, you have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. You mean we don't have to kill them? Maybe it's this one, and I shared this one at, uh, at the wedding on, 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 on uh, Friday. Matthew 6, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So don't worry about tomorrow. Anyone? Anyone worried about tomorrow? (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. for sure. Don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. It's amazing in that passage, earlier in that passage that I shared at, at, at the wedding where it says, it talks, about, um, it talks about God feeds the birds. Have you ever thought of that? You know, has anybody here been like Pastor Paul and you, you have a little bird feeder and you like the birds to come? But how many of you, come on, how many of you have at some point in your life have been inconsistent and all the birds have not died? God feeds the birds. We have these two giant, I don't even know what they are. I think they're spruces. Andy would know what they are. In the front of my yard. And there is chickadees in there all year round. Chickadee, dee, 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 dee. And they're finding those little pine things and those little thingy things and the thingy bobs and the ring-a-ding-dings. And they're eating them. And whether I put bird seed in the feeder or not, there's food for them to eat. If God will feed the birds... And God will clothe the lilies. How much more, the scripture says, in Matthew chapter 6, will he take care of you? And that we need to seek first his kingdom and all these things will be added unto you. So, here's my challenge for this morning. This is where we're going to come in for a landing. When you read this passage and it says, (coughs) deny yourself, Take up your cross and follow me. It's a little overwhelming. It is. It's. It, I don't know about you, but I, you know, denying myself, taking up my cross, and following him, those are not natural things to any person. But if we take one step this week in doing something that's going to stretch us to follow Jesus, he'll help us to walk all the way. I believe that with all my heart. So, I want you to think about it. I want you to think about it as we're getting ready to close here. I want you to think about, Lord, what am I going to do this week? Maybe for you it's going back and and reading those, uh, you know those, the things called the fruit of the Spirit? (laughs) Yikes. 
Like Galatians 5, right? The fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience. (laughs) One step at a time. One step at a time. But it will involve self-denial. It will involve death, dying to self. And it will involve following Jesus no matter what the cost. I'm going to ask uh, Abby to come and uh, Bella if you want to go up with her too. That'd be great. Such a blessing to... Uh, we, we're blessed. We get, to, we get to have Abby at our house a lot. And, uh, and, and we see Bella and, and Cynthia and Celia. I'm just so thankful for what God is doing in these young ladies' lives. And uh, yeah, it's, you should try it sometime. It's not easy to stand up in front of a whole pile of people and uh, do what they do. But I'm very thankful for all the people we have in our church that give, the gifts, give their gifts to the Lord. Amen. And, and do this. We're going to sing. Uh, what are we singing, Abby? The blessing. We're going to sing the blessing. I'm going to ask you to stand. And. Uh, when we sing this song, I want you to think about it because it's, 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 it's really like a benediction. It's a blessing of your family and your generations and your people. But I want, to, I want you to extend your family this morning and think about if I try to be a disciple of Jesus, if I follow after him, if I take those steps up that hill, Number one, he's going to be with you. He's going to help you. But what kind of impact could you have on somebody else, someone else's family? You know, someone that you're going to meet this week, someone that you're going to see at the restaurant today or at the coffee shop this week. Let's sing this and let's declare it. But let's think about how God could use us as his disciples to see others follow him. Paul said... Paul said in, in, the, in the epistles, he said, follow me as I follow Christ. And when we're living it out, when we are living it out, there's going to be some people that are going to follow us. But hopefully it's not they're following us with all our, you know, some of our stuff. <laughs> but they're following us because we're trying to follow Christ. Let's sing this together.
our families and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening and you're coming and you're going and you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you may his favor be upon you Father, we thank you this morning as we go from this place that you are for us and you are with us. Lord, you go with us. And as we take these steps to follow you, as we deny ourselves and take up our cross and follow you, we do not go alone but you go with us and you will help us. Lord, I pray this week in a very real and a very practical way you will show us one thing that we can do to be a follower of Jesus. Just show us. It may be in a situation that we deal with. It may be in a conversation. Or it may be when we're completely on our own. Lord, go with us today. Bless these beautiful people. In Jesus' name, amen. Just a reminder, if you can come tonight, we're going to have a prayer time from 7 to 8 here at the altar. Pray K7A. We're praying for our community. There will be other churches here. You're welcome to come and join us. Have an awesome day. Take care.